Welcome back. Okay, it's um, video three of the semester review, and we're starting with number 32. So let's um, keep going. All right, so the um, question is to find the slope of each line. Now, as you're going to see, there is this line, and there are no points, which means that you have to be really diligent in finding where the line actually crosses over and matches onto a intersection and um, it is not easy to see and so um, on the star test they do not provide you with the points you're going to get graphs just like this which is why we did it this way to get you trained to actually really really look carefully to see where the point crosses over the line so I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to look really carefully, and I'm going to see, okay, it looks like this is a point right here. And I'm going to follow the line, and I don't see where it's crossing, it's not crossing, it's not crossing. And then all of a sudden I look, and I start to see where it's coming up on the other side. So this is the other point there. So I'm looking for the slope, which I know the slope is my rise over my run, which, um, well, I love this song. Okay, um, rise of a run. So I'm going to go up one. This is positive one. And then I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a positive eight. I'm going in that direction. So make sure that my rise is first and my run is second. So my rise is one, my run is eight, so my slope is one over eight. And they're both positive, 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 which is a positive. All right, this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look and see, okay, I don't see anything where, but look, right here it looks like, and it might be easier to see on your copy, that's where it looks like it crosses for me. Going up, I'm looking, I'm looking, and I don't see where it crosses. This is getting close, but it is not on the money. I need to find one right exactly perfect. And this one looks like that is exactly perfect. So you really have to train your eyes to find the exact perfect spot. So I know my slope is my, slope is my rise. That's positive 5 over my run which is negative two. I could have gone down one, two, three, four, five, which would be negative five over one, two, which is a positive two. It does not matter. As long as one is negative and one is positive, we are still going to have a negative slope. This is the rise. This is the run. So my rise goes on top, my run goes on the bottom, and it does not matter which way the negative goes, it's, it's going to create the whole slope as a negative. All right. Find the slope of the line through each pair of points. So we've got, we know that there is a um, formula that we like to use, and it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that will give me my slope, which is shown by m. So if this is my x, this is my y, this is the first ordered pair. This would be my x, this would be my y of my second ordered pair. Okay, so the y2 is negative 1. The y1 is negative 19. Now here's something that I see happen a lot. Sometimes you guys just throw negatives in randomly. You need to make sure that if it's a negative, it's a negative. If it's a positive, don't be seeing minus a negative if it's a positive. Please, please, please pay attention to your negatives. This one actually is a negative. So 1 minus a negative, 19. Here we've got our x2 is 9 minus our x1, which is 3. So when you have 1 minus a negative, a negative and a negative is a positive. So when I 
add that, I'm going to get positive 18. 9 minus 3 is positive 6. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So my slope, here let's say this, m equals, my slope is 3. That's what it's asking me to find, just my slope. Okay, so let's use the same equation here. m is going to equal, this is my x, this is my y, this is my x, this is my y. Make sure you're subtracting your y's and that your y goes over your x. That's another common mistake. This is your rise. This is your run. The y value is what goes up and down. The run goes across. Make sure your y is on top of your run or your x. So 5 minus 0 is my y values. 20 minus 20 is my x values. So I get 5 over 0. What happens when I have a number over 0? That slope is going to be undefined. And just so that you know, so here is your answer. Anytime you have a number over 0, it's going to be undefined. That is not okay. We do not like 0 in the denominator. When 0 is in the numerator, though, the answer is 0. Okay? But when it's in the denominator, it is undefined. Make sure you know the difference. Moving on. 36. Find the slope of a line parallel to each given line. So I need to find the slope of a line which is parallel to this line. So in order to find the slope of a line parallel to this line, I need to figure out what the slope of this line is. And in order to do that, this is an AX plus BY equals C form, and I need to change that to Y equals MX plus B form because that is going to give me my slope. So in order to do that, I need to move, I'm going to solve for Y because I want Y by itself. I'm going to subtract 2X from both sides, and this cancels out, so I get Y equals negative 2X plus 1. So here this is my y equals mx plus b. It's looking for the slope of a line parallel. I know that parallel lines have the same slope. So this is the slope of a line parallel. So my slope is going to be negative 2. That's it. That's your answer. This would be the slope of any line parallel to that equation. Same here. Let's figure this out. So it's in standard form. we got to change it to y-intercept form or slope-intercept form. So we're going to subtract 4x from both sides. we got to move our x. That's the first. So when you're, when you're doing from, sta from standard to slope. First step, move your x. Kind of like in that show, move your bus. Move your x, move the bus. All right, then when we've moved the x, we've got 3y equals negative 4x plus 6. Now we need to get rid of the coefficient of y. So we need to do inverse operation if necessary. Over here it wasn't necessary. We didn't have a number in front of y. We didn't need to do the inverse operations. If necessary we need to do the inverse operations which is divide by 3. Divide by the coefficient of y. That's going to cross each other out. y equals negative 4 thirds x. 6 over 3 is 2. So this is the slope. This is that line in this form. But the slope of a line parallel would be 
negative four thirds. Do you notice that I'm only putting the number in front of the X? That's it. I'm only putting the number in front of the X. All right. On to, okay, so now we have a graph of a line. Can you see that? A graph of a line where we need to now write in slope intercept form the equation of this line. So what I need is my M and my B. What goes here and what goes here? Well, I can immediately say the B is where this crosses the y-intercept or the y-axis. So that's going to be 4. Now to find my slope, I need to find the rise over the run. So I need to look and see where is it that this crosses perfectly. Perfectly. That's not perfect. That's not perfect. That's close, but that is not perfect. Do not pick that point. That is not perfect. The next perfect line is right here where it crosses. So I'm going to go up. My rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Positive 6. My run is 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, maybe that was perfect. 4. Positive 4. So maybe that was a perfect match. I didn't think it was. How do I know that now? Because I know that 6 is my rise, 4 is my run, and I can reduce that by 2 and get 3 over 2. So... I guess that was a perfect match. It didn't look like one to me. But do you see how even if I didn't, I still got the same answer because I could get that and reduce it. Moving on. So same here. We're going to look for a perfect match. We know that it's going to be y equals something in front of x. Oops, something in front of x plus your b. I'm going to put a negative because I noticed that this is a negative where it crosses. Oh, I didn't mean to put B there. I'm going to put 5. My y-intercept is 5. Negative 5. My slope, I'm going to look. Where does it perfectly cross? I don't see it crossing perfectly until up here. So let me count. My rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do you see how I'm going in a straight line up? I have to go in a straight line up, so that's positive 9. Then my run, so this is my rise up the y-axis. My run is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is, positive 4 is my run. Rise over run is 9 over 4, and that is going to equal my m value. So I'm going to plug that in right here. So here is my equation. Okay, this is my final answer over here. Okay, now going to the next page, number 40, right? Is that right? Yeah. Number 40. Woohoo! Still same thing. We're supposed to be writing this in slope-intercept form, the equation of the line. So these are in standard form. We've done this a lot. What's the first step? Move your x. Move your x. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I get this cross each other out, negative 3y equals, I cannot combine these because one's an x and one's a whole number. So I just have to put them side by side for them to live like that until we figure things out. Now, I'm going to inverse operations. 
which means divide by the divide by the coefficient which is negative 3 negative 3 I need to divide by negative 3 to get my sweet little y by itself okay so when I do that that crosses out da -dum, y is now alone but I've got this mess to deal with a negative over a negative is a positive I know that that's a 1 over x or so 1 third x and a positive over a negative is a negative and 12 divided by 3 is 4 so there is that equation where negative or positive one third is my slope, negative four is my intercept. Okay, same here. What's the first thing? Move your x. Move your x to the other side, which is inverse operations, but that's the first way of doing inverse operations is moving your x. This is going to cross off. I get negative 2y equals, I cannot combine those. Don't give me negative 3x on that. This They have to live by, side by side. They're not going to um, combine together. Negative 9x plus 6. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to divide by the coefficient of y. Of y. Negative 2 negative 2, negative 2. This cancels out, so I get y by itself. Posi or a negative over a negative is a positive, so that's going to give me 9 halves. x positive over a negative is a negative. 6 over 2 is a 3. Boom. Done. Yay. Check that off. All right, moving on. It keeps getting better. All right, write the slope of the intercept form. Oh, wait, write the slope intercept form of the equation of the line through these given points. So this is kind of multi step. What um, is the first step in this that we need to do? Um, we are going to um, find our slope. So here, find slope, then find B, so this is our M, find our y-intercept, and then put it in equation. So those are your three steps. Okay, so let's get going. So in order to find my slope, the formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let me tell you, this is never going away. You're going to be using this for a long, long time. So this formula is going to become very familiar to you, but it is something that you're going to use for a long, long time. So this is my x, this is my y, this is my x, this is my y. This is pair 1. This is pair 2. So my y2 is 1. My, X, my y1 is 4. My x2 is 5. My x1 is 0. When I subtract 1 from negative 1 minus 4 is minus 3. 5 minus 0 is 5. So this is my slope. Now I need to find my y-intercept. But look, ta-da! If you saw that, congratulations. If you didn't, that's okay. But if you saw that, my y-intercept is what y is when x is 0. So when x is 0, y is 4, that is going to give me the number on my y-axis. Or my, yeah, my axis. So I don't even have to do anything more. I can just plug this in because I know that this is my slope, x, and I know that 4 is my y-intercept. Boom. Okay. 
If you did not see that, then you'd have to go through the next steps to get there. And that is, basically, you would have to then, if you did not see that, then what you would do is you would say, okay, so now I've got my slope at negative 3 over 5. Now I need to take my equation, y equals mx plus b, and solve for b. That's step two. So I found slope, I found b, I need to find b. And in order to do that, I take this equation, and I take one of these two points and put it in there, and then I can solve for b. So I know that my m is negative 3 over 5, right? I found that out. I also know that my, let's use this one, that my y is 1. So I'm going to put 1 for my y. I also know that my x is 5. I can use these values and pop them in my equation here. So I'm going to plug 5 in here. And what I'm looking for is another colored pen to say, what is my B? All right. So I can now do the math and solve for B. So I'm going to find B. So I found my slope. Now I'm looking for B. What is B? So when I add these together, when I multiply these together, I get 1 equals 5 over 5. We know 5 divided by 5 is going to be 1, so I get negative 3 plus b. So now I'm going to just solve for b. The one thing standing in the way of getting b equals is this negative 3. I've got to get rid of that negative 3, and in order to do so, I use my inverse operations. It's right now being subtracted. So I need to add 3 to both sides. Balance my equation. I need to add 3 to both sides. And I get 4 equals B. So then my plug in Y equals MX plus B. I'm going to plug in my M, which is negative 3 over 5X. And I'm going to plug in this B for B plus B. And look it. I got the same answer. All right. So here we go. So there, I'm going to change up colors. I'm getting bored with purple. So now, same thing. I take this and I'm not given the y intercept, so I actually have to do that again. So my m is going to equal my y2, my y2 over my y1 and my x, um, my y2 minus my y1 over my x2 minus my x1. So this is set 2, this is set 1. So 2 minus 5 divided by 5 minus negative 1. When I have a negative minus a negative, I'm going to put those both positive, and I get negative 3. 5 plus 1 is 6. When I reduce that, I'm going to get negative 1 half. So I'm going to, this is my m. This is my slope. All right. So now what I need to figure out is what is my, so I found my slope. Now I need to find my b. So I'm going to plug it in, y equals mx plus b. What numbers can I plug in to figure out what b is? Well, I can use these. I can use, let's do 2 and 5 since that's not a negative. I like to use the positive. So I can plug 2 in for my y equals, I can plug negative 1 half in for my m. Then I can plug in 5 for my x, and then I need to solve for b, plus b. 
So in order to do that, now I've got 2. So I get 2 equals negative 1 half times 5 is going to give me negative 2.5. Is that right? And I, um, let me make sure that I'm getting that right. Negative 2.5 and then plus B. Well, let's see. Just, just figure it out. Now I'm going to add. I don't think that that's right. I think I did something wrong. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. Hold on. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to add 2.5 plus 2.5. And I get 4.5 equals B. So my equation is going to be Y equals my slope, negative one half X plus 4.5 or four and a half. Either way. Okay. Let's stop this video and we'll um, be done with this one for now and then um, go into video three.